we're seeing obviously loads in, in the news all over social media lately about chat GPT and AI. That's the big news in tech right yes. now. What do you think about it? Is is it coming for our jobs? Um, you, you know, I, I love that question. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, yes, yes, it's coming for our jobs, but it's not going to reduce the number of jobs. So I like to, um, I like to bring up the point that every technology and every advance that we've had so far has come from people's jobs. Uh, that's for sure. And those jobs have changed, but the sheer number of jobs has actually increased uh, over the decades. You know, it doesn't matter whether we had process improvement, offshoring, outsourcing, immigration, automation, robotics, computers, the internet, all of these things have come into play. But if you look since the 1960s, every decade, the number of jobs per capita has actually increased, you know, across the spectrum, mostly the developed world. And I, I can't argue, I can't speak to the developing world because I, you know, I don't have those numbers, but, you know, at least for sure in America, you know, there are more jobs per person today than there were 60 years ago, even though we've had all these advances. Now the jobs have changed for sure. Uh, so to answer you, you know, for sure your question is true. You know, the, the chat GPT is going to take some jobs for sure. But it's also going to create a lot of opportunity, a lot of opportunity for people to start businesses, make money. The promise of technology, as I talk about it, is speed, leverage, and predictability. You know, do things faster, do more with less, and do it right more frequently. You know, you know computers and, and machinery are not perfect, but they are much more error less than humans. So offloading tasks to you know computers and machines that can do that repetitive stuff over and over again, you know, right correctly each time. Is just the way you know the kind of a business has to go these days, and the statistics bear this out. How well do you think most businesses are utilizing the, the technology right now? Yeah, by my estimation, I say it's about forty percent. And the reason I say that is, if you have a technology and you're leveraging it poorly, or or just average, fifty, sixty percent, and then that technology is leveraging up against other technology, and that's leveraging against other technology and against people. Uh, and all of those are just using a portion of their capability. That's a lot of you know, potential speed, leverage, and predictability that's being left on the table. What do you think is the single most important thing that any leader can do? We kind of touched on it. I think it's develop your people. You know, I feel like most leaders, you have two roles. The two main things you need to do is make good decisions. And the other one is develop your people. I think a lot of times leaders get into a position and then they're protective of their position. I try to get into a position and think, who's my replacement? And the reason I think that is because one, how am I going to go on and do something else if I'm stuck in doing this one thing or this one area of work, right? I can't move up. I can't move laterally. I can't find other projects. I can't create more value. If I'm stuck doing all the things I'm doing today, I can't do what needs to be done next. And so I try to think, who's my replacement? Now, maybe that means entirely who's going to take on this role when I move on or, or get, you know, change jobs or promotion or whatever, you know, at least in the past. Um, but also who's going to take on this particular aspect of my job or my role? Or as we grow, who's going to take on this new capacity, you know? Um, and that allows me to really think about how do I invest in my people? How do I think about, you know, the future of the business and the company? And, and that too is kind of related to in making good decisions, but I think developing your people can't be underestimated. I agree. Yeah, I think there's uh, there's a there's a fine balance, isn't there? And I think many people. I mean, I certainly did it in in the past. Will go the wrong to the wrong extreme of either one of those because on the one hand, there's like, well, if there's someone else who can do my job, what's my value? Right. Uh, and, and you have to be able to kind of face that. And then there's the other aspect of, well, if no one else can do my job, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, what happens to the business? Right. And so, you know, you've got to walk that line. You've got to be able to face <laughs> both of those possibilities, haven't you? And it's yeah. you know, like, what then has been your own best experience of being led? So I, I probably up to this point in my career, I, I probably have to say Peter Diamandis. I, I worked with him. He's pretty famous. So if you wanted to look him up, he's not, he's not hard to find. Uh, I think Peter was a pretty amazing leader. He had a lot going on, multiple companies, worked at a very high level with lots of people. But when he was talking with you, he was present. And one of the few things that he did that would probably drive most people crazy, but when you learn Peter, you, you were accepted is 
he always looked he would always look at his phone when he got text messages or, or phone calls or whatever when he was talking to you but he never left the conversation he was still able to be in the conversation and the funny thing was is you knew if you were the one that was texting or calling and needed something urgently you knew that no matter what he was doing he would get back to you right away so you were really never waiting on a decision from peter you were never waiting he was not usually a bottleneck to anything going on he was a really driven um, again, really present in conversations, deeply cared and passionate about his businesses and his people. So I think, you know, no leader has all the perfect qualities, none that I've met anyway. Um, but that was probably my best experience, learning from somebody at, at his level, level and his caliber, um, doing, doing as much right as I've, I've seen done by, you know, in my career anyway.